All right, welcome everybody. I'm Chris Woolley, I'm your host, and this is Let's Develop. So if this is your first time joining us, welcome. This is a fun educational webinar series for photographers, and uh, we just like to have a good time here. So I'm uh, very happy that you're joining us. So let me kind of walk you through what Let's Develop is so you can see what we're in store for. So today we're looking at Steel Life Painting, which is gonna be super, super cool. And if you don't know much about what Let's Develop is, well, let me give you the uh, 411 on that. Uh, we've got a new episode every two weeks. Basically, reach out, find amazing photographers, and they share information with us in a fun educational format that's an hour long. So we get a lot of cool education in, a lot of diverse topics, and they're from all over. So I also want to give a shout out to American Color Imaging uh, for help making this happen. So uh, love ACI. They've got some prizes, giveaways, and specials for us at the end of the uh, show today too. So make sure you're staying to the end for those ones. If you happen to miss the last episode, we had Renee Gage on B, Finding Your Path. This is kind of an interactive process with uh, finding your place in photography and what you're doing and how you can expand on that. So the replay is live. You can find that on ACI's website, acilab.com slash let's dash develop. So be sure to check that one out. All right, so now I know what we are waiting for. We wanna get into that light painting. So let me introduce our guest here, uh, Michael Pucciarelli, and uh, he's gonna be guiding us in on light painting. So he started in the photography realm, digital photography realm in 2010, doing landscapes and architect photography, and then kind of expanded into his uh, light painting skills. Uh, might recognize him from ASP. He's quite involved there. He's got his own Facebook group about doing still life fine art painting uh, and just an all around uh, pretty cool guy. So, uh, Michael, what do you got in store for us today? Yeah, well, my name is Mike Pucciarelli, and tonight I'll be talking about light painting. And I just want to thank, be very thankful that I have the, have the opportunity to speak for the Let's Develop webinar series. You know, like Chris said, I started in 2010. In 2013, get an associate degree. And then 2015, I joined Professional Photographers of America. In 2017, I joined some of the local affiliate clubs. And then 2021, I got my craftsman at the virtual ceremony. And that's when I joined ASP. And then 2022, I got my CPP, Certified Professional Photographer from Photographers of America. So tonight, I'm going to be talking about, you know, light painting. And tonight's agenda, we're going to talk to you about, uh, you know, light painting information and some techniques that I use. And tonight, we're just going to talk about continuous light painting. I know you can light paint with flash, but we're just going to be talking about the LED you know, flashlights, LED equipments. And I have some illustrations on equipments, uh, stuff you can buy in a store, and stuff you can make out of simple wood and other products. And I have two light strip diagrams. And then I'm going to have... An Adobe Photoshop demo, how I use light painting, how I use actions to speed things up, how I use actions in groups, and blend modes of filters. So if you have any questions, you can always email me at mpucciarelliart2016 at gmail.com. And this will be uh, in the follow-up email that's going out too. So uh, if you didn't get that email address down, uh, I'm emailing it to you, as well as a link to his uh, YouTube channel. Okay. I just want to quickly show my portfolio. Maybe. <laughs> Must be a big portfolio. Sometimes the bandwidth, but you know, traffic on the internet. <laughs> yep. Probably doesn't help that we're streaming live, huh? You have to do a refresh. There we go. So this is my recent light paintings. And tonight we're going to talk about this, how I did this. And this is my first seal, my first merit. And these are my other, you know, illustrative categories. And these are my artist category merits. I do the same technique where I'm talking about parts of the photograph in JPEGs. I just copy it over and I use a special action to speed things up to do that. And I love to do fruit or antiques in a certain way. I love fruit. 
I like to do food. Food can be tricky at times, but I like to do food. I like to do product photography on the black plexiglass, you know, the reflection. This is part of a, a big trip. The first part was my part. The small part was Italy. I toured the Vatican. I toured the Colosseum. And this is a bridge outside the Vatican. This is near the. This is one of the arcs near the Colosseum. I think it's the Titus Arc. And this is the bigger part of the trip where I took it with, you know, Kelly Schneider, KF Fine Arts, where we photographed models. And this is in Tuscany. This is a theater, an old theater. And I love to do waterfalls. This is Ricketts Glen State Park. This is in Ocean City. This is, you know, I like to do rocks and shores and landscape. This is a pier. And the last one is like a romantic sunset. All right. So lighting. Oh. Yep. So let's get into the, the meat of it. <laughs> yeah, light painting is basically of using talking about lightning modifiers to soften the lead light or lead flashlight. And there's many ways you can do it. You can use plastic fusion scrims or white scrim reflectors. And this is great for when you want to use it with shiny objects and it controls the unwanted glare. You can also use Cinefill. This is like black aluminum foil. You could use duct tape or um, spring clamps to attach it. And tonight, I'm going to be spending a lot of time on, you know, foil filters or pipe filters. We are, these are just plastic PC feet pipes you could buy at a hardware store. And I'll talk about how you could use a hacksaw to cut it and shape it the way you like. And then there's duct tape, where duct tape, you use it to build the foil filter. But you could just use duct tape for a tiny slit snoot, like a for a small lead flashlight. And then you can also... Use big scrims. I'll show that later. That if the like the light coming through the window is too harsh, that's where you use a big scrim, a six foot scrim, and I will talk about it at the end. Then you got white or black cards just to block unwanted, you know, light. And all of this you can purchase at any art store. Or most of you can purchase it at you know a hardware store online, but you can buy a lot of this at ma any major department store. So this is my light room setup, but light painting setup where you want to shine it through the light. This is like a scrim. This will soften the light. And this is, I talk about this piece of equipment, a cube, where you can just have like a small table. And these are just stands where, and these are connectors where you can just connect the scrim where if you want to shine a light above. And then filters I recommend for any lead flashlight because they help you light paint better and they work well with any kind of lead flashlight. And it's great for softening the light and I'll get the image you like. You'll bring the image and the lighting out better. And I'll talk about filters coming up very soon. This is... You know, some people call this the Godex lighting stick. This is what I use to light say something big, or if you want to light paint something like the backgrounds. And I recommend that you close the barn doors. And I always have the light at 56K. You could change a light to 3800K, but I always like to leave it at 56K. And I always use it handheld. You can mount it on a stand. If I had to use it, I would just have it on the ground aiming at an angle because there was a time when I was doing a light painting where there wasn't enough sun coming because it was a cloudy day so I needed to add more light and that's where I had to lay the lighting stick on the ground with barn doors aiming at an angle to make it look natural and you can light paint several hours with this and you have the car the charger here and this is the remote and I recommend you know the barn doors to make the light more narrow so this can be used in many ways. This is another powerful light that I use. I've always used it with the plug. I never used it with the V-mount battery because the V-mount batteries could be more expensive than the light. 
And here's a snoot snock where it makes it affects three fourths the stop of the light. And this is great for making the light softer, more flattering. And you have the cord, and you also have you could also charge it with your car charger. And you have 600 LEDs. And this is great for light pinning a motorcycle or something big. And you can also have a dimmer. You can control the light. This is another light that's similar, but it only has 216 LED lamps. All this comes in the package. You have to buy the battery separately. I had to buy the cord separately. It did not come with this, but the cord's great. And I recommend just regular alkaline batteries because I had an issue with the rechargeable batteries where the dimmer wouldn't work right. But then when I put in regular batteries, it worked fine. When I use this, I usually just, you know, close the barn doors, make the light more narrow, or I could use the silver. But some people do use the, um, the color of gels here. There's a plastic plates, but I just like to use either this plate to make the light softer. And the light, like the other light, is bounced at 56K. And I would just recommend if you're indoors, I'd recommend using this cord or maybe fully fresh alkaline batteries. And this takes six um, AA batteries. This light is great if you want to light paint like a tire of a car. And I recommend that you light paint, you put a scrim so the light won't be so harsh. And you have a car charger. You could also charge this. This is the charger. You could charge up the light. And this is great. You know, you want to make sure that you charge it before you use it. Make sure it works. It's all the defiant lead light. This is another light, I haven't used it in a while, but this is a powerful light where if you want to light paint something far away, it's called the Maximum, Maximum 3. It has a very powerful battery, a 12 volt rechargeable battery. And you can light paint for hours. But if you haven't used this in a while, the light won't be very strong. So that's why you want to charge up the battery before you use it because if it sits in here, you wear out the battery life. But this is a powerful light and fully charged. These are what I mean by, you know, foil filters. These are just PCV pipes. This is duct tape. And you just put it on the flashlight. You know, you just go to the, you measure the diameter of the flashlight. You buy the same diameter of the PCV pipe. And you, it should fit, and it does. But then you just have like a hacksaw you cut a 40 degree angle and you just connect it with duct tape. And I recommend that you use these foil filters with a lead flashlight. You'll get the effect that you like and the you, chances are that you have a properly exposed image. Because if you shine like a lead light without a foil filter, you'll probably have an overexposed image. And I'll talk about the swinging perpendicular motion in the diagram later. All you do is you have the lead flashlight, you put it on the flashlight. And if you want to swing in perpendicular motion, you want to put light in the photograph, but you also want to put shadows. And if you want to emphasize more texture, you go slower. And if you want to emphasize less texture, you go quicker. And you want to think of the direction of the light. You want to light paint from more than one angle. And you want to think of the edges when you're trying to light paint. You want to make sure that you shoot with the full value with the camera and also your LED flashlights. And you want to come with extra fresh batteries and make sure everything works. The last thing is, well, I want to make sure you use a cable release to keep the camera still, but the last thing is, when you light paint with a new flashlight, make sure you light paint a gray card so that it avoid color cast problems. So if I do five exposure with this light, you want to light paint a gray card first. And then if I want to switch to this light, you want to light paint a gray card first so that you avoid color cast problems.
This is where you, the lead lights look with the filters on. See how less harsh this looks? And you have an easier image to work with, and you light paint differently and better. The filters will add value to your light painting. See how harsh the light is without the filters? So I just recommend that you know you use filters to tone down the light. And these are all my camera cases. Now I just have the lead lights and I have now the filters in like a nylon bag. These cases are soft and sturdy, and I got these at Micro Center. You can buy these at any computer store. And the last few years, they're tough, they're sturdy, and they don't take up a lot of space. And they're cheaper than the average case, but photography equipment's coming down like this, the cases. But I just, I like to go to Micro Center and get some sturdy cases like this. These are all my LED flashlights. This light has about 3,300 lumens. Lumens measure, talks about, deals with measuring the power of the light. And then the small LED flashlight, how about 50 lumens? And a lot of times when I do still life, I like to use the middle lights here. This is about 150 to 200 lumens. But it depends on what you're trying to light paint. And a lot of times with small still life, I like to use a small LED flashlight. And then, like I said, talking about the wands, I like to use the big, you know, Godox lighting wand for the backgrounds. You get a very beautiful image. These are all my fill filters. It's connected with duct tape. And it's great for softening the powerful light. You can use construction tape, but I recommend duct tape because it's tougher and it lasts better. And these are all my stands. And I have some ground stands. I have regular stands. I have big boom stands. And these are bags that come with the big boom stands. These medium stands are impact. I recommend either impact or Manfredo. I have to buy these separately. And I have stones in these bags. So people use sand. I just like to put stones. And the stones are still there. I never take them out. But and I use concrete blocks to hold my stands, but I talk about concrete blocks, how it could hold up like a foam board in place of a stand. And these are my silver and white reflectors. Now, when I do a blank exposure, I do it around sunset. And sometimes I have to add in light in the shadow and I take the shot. So I use a silver reflector. But I could also take all this off, and this could be like a white scrim reflector. When you shine the light through, the light would be more pleasant. I could also use the white part to add in light in a you know, non-dramatic way, but I always like to use like the silver reflector to add light in the shadow. These are my snoots. I like these in product photography. I can also use these in light painting where if I have a big lead flashlight, I could put a piece of tape to make the hole smaller and make the light more narrow. And I recommend, and I'll talk about this later in a diagram where if you want to light paint, you want to light paint at a 45 degree angle. And these are just crates where you can hold a light, you can store stuff. And the same thing with the bucket. There's a time when I was coming from Brookside Gardens, where I found one of these on the road. It was a brand new crate. And I decided just to take it and use it because it was just sitting there. Sometimes store managers give these away. These are great to hold stuff or put a light on. These are all my light painting tables where some people, they give away wood. I saw some nice wood and I got some brackets from Home Depot and I screwed these on. These are very sturdy tables. Some tables are big, like these. And some tables are small, where this one, but it was like a small bookcase, and I took it apart because it was falling apart, and I just built the small still life table. So if you like, a, if you have like a broken piece of furniture, you might want to 
shape it the way you like, but make it something useful. And these are boards for, you know, when I want to do longer still life. Because I used to use mats placed, right, one next to the other. I used to clone out the crack, but now with these boards, they'll take care of the problem. So I don't have to worry about that. But the boards you can buy at Home Depot for about $10, maybe $15. But these are great for adding texture into your background. These are just placemats where before the boards, I would have one right next to another where I have to clean out the line, but I still use these like for single products, like horizontal shots. A lot of times I like to use like the dark textures so that brings out the subject better. You can buy these at Target for several dollars. And some things that are, sometimes these are on sale. You can buy them even cheaper. These are just background drops. A lot of times I like to just use like a black or a brown foam board. You could buy at Plaza Arts. And you can use a stand to hold it. You can use like a concrete blocks, and I'll show that soon. This is just a homemade rack from wood where if you want to put a backgrounds, you can expand these poles. I could also use this to store stands, but now I have all my foam and silver reflectors in here. So I've used this in many ways. These are just tubes like you saw in the other diagram where if you want to put a foam board or just a piece of wood, you could turn this into like a small table. This is a concrete block. I could use the holes to store stuff, but I also stand it up where I could rest a foam board and this will take the place of a stand. And these are the stools where the arms are falling apart. So I got a parasol and I cut these off. And these are nice stools you could have someone sit on or you could just have like a table, you could rest the light. And I still use these stools today. This is like a floor rack where this is like when I bought a new dishwasher, I decided to keep this and I just screwed this piece of wood on. This is like if you want to put a light close to the floor, you could angle it or you could just rest it on the wood in this wood. This is great. I use this in like the white plex table photographs, but I could also use it in you know light painting if I want to angle the lighting wad at a certain angle. These are just expansion poles. They just go to the floor, to the ceiling. They're very sturdy. You can hold up foam boards. You can hold up, you know, reflectors, screen reflectors. And these are just CAG clamps. And CAG clamps you can just buy at a hardware store, like for five bucks or two or three dollars. These are just poles, and the bottom poles are expandable where. You can make it really long for a big background, like you're going to put on the rack that I showed you. These are my big bees where I made them out of, you know, stretcher frames from Plaza Arts. I got the plastic fusion, the plastic canvas material at home, at Office Depot, and it just stapled in. And this can make use them anyways. I can make the room dark by blocking the light. I could also put this in a corner to take a portrait photograph. So I've used these many ways. And these are all my scrims where this is like a frame you could buy at an art store. I bought this at Target. These are plaza, these are stretch of frames and plaza arts where you have plastic fusion material, Bought the plastic fusion material from BH. I bought this, but the frame here, film fusion draft paper from Plaza Arts. So there's many ways you can get this material from stores or online. These are my big scrims. These are where if the light's so harsh, 
I could put this in front of the window to make the light softer. And that's just for the blank exposure. Now when it gets dark, you can move this because it's going to be different. Or I can use like a double scrim effect. You could have one right after the other. And this is just wood from Home Depot. And I have angle brackets. I screw this on. And this is like tracing paper or draft fusion paper from Plaza Arts. And these are very effective. You don't need a stand. You can just rest on a strobe or rest on a table. And these are all my lenses, you know, my Canon lenses. I like to use my prime lenses for my still life for light painting. A lot of times I use the Canon EF35. But I've used all these lenses and they all work well. And I use the 7200, 100, 400 for outdoor. But for still life light painting, I like to just focus on the EF35 or any prime lens. Now I'm using the Canon R6. And I have a YouTube video on that, which is separate from this presentation. This is a great camera. And I'm also very thankful for the converter because I can use all my non-RF lenses. And this is a great camera. And I learned just by watching YouTube videos. And I could post those videos in another link. But the R6 is a great camera. Mirrorless is great. I really enjoy this camera. And I did, now I'm just starting to use this. There's a lot you can do with this camera. But the image stabilization, fiber reduction, that's what Nikon calls it. If you use it with the tripod, turn it off. If you don't use a tripod, turn it on because you could have color shift problems or just you could not, it's not good for the pixels. But the manual focus, autofocus, I like to use the regular autofocus from a regular still light, but light painting. I'd like to do a pre-focus with the autofocus and just switch it to manual. So when I press the shutter, the sensor won't have to think hard at all. These are my camera cases I use for the lens. Same cases I showed on the other slide. They're sturdy, they're, sturdy, they're tough, they don't take up a lot of space. These are my two tripods. This is my architect tripod, my landscape tripod. But in still life photography and light painting, I just like to use a lighting stand. And I always like to use ISO 100 when I use a tripod indoors. But outdoors, it's a different story with different ISOs, with or without a tripod. And I always use a cable release to remote for my still life for light painting. It helps keep the camera still. Now, for Canon 7D, I use this, but since I'm now doing everything with mirrorless, I've been using this, and this works well. This only costs like $9, but it's a nice cable release. It's long, but it's good. Sometimes I can use a remote. And I could also recommend maybe you could use your cell phone, but technology advancing it. I may get into that, but I've been using my cable release, and that works well. This is my remote shutter where it just operates on two AAA batteries where this will fit in any hot shoe of any Canon. And this will, as long as you have this configuration, this will work well with the 70, but I haven't tried this with the R6, but technology advanced in that you may just use, you know, the wireless Wi-Fi technologies for the other camera. The R6. And it's very flexible. You could be many feet away, 80 meters. It has many more channels, like 30 possible channels. It has a flexible timer for the hour, minute, and second. Now, my connecting cables to the computer, when I do my regular still life and light painting, I have my booster cable, and this will connect to the R6. This will connect to the 7D, but I've been using the R6 for everything now. So now I just use, I start with this with the computer, and then I just use this to connect to the camera. Because I like to do tethered capture for everything, where I look at the photograph, and I'll see if it's ever exposed. 
So you're shooting tethered for uh, doing your light paintings? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Now, when you light paint, you can also put a reflector. You can also put, you know, a foil filter. You want to make sure you light paint at a 40 degree angle. And you want to go back and forth. You want to put in shadows so you put in detail in the light. And for every new fl LED flashlight, make sure you start with the new gray card. So you bounce out the colors. And you also, you know, avoid color cast problems. And this is something bigger. Same rule applies, 40 for every angle. I'm going to go back and forth. And you want to put in shadows in the photographs. You're putting character in the light. And you want to also put in like a scrim, plastic fusion scrim. So you make the light less harsh when you light paint. And for every new lead light, you want to start with the new gray card. Just avoid color cast problems. You balance out the colors. Now I'm going to go to Adobe Photoshop. With your new screen share. All right. The fun stuff. We actually get to see how to put this together now, right? Yeah. So I'm going to... There's an action that I use to make things go really easy. I'm going to bring it up. Let's see. That's a bit small on our screen. What's the, the action do? This action, what it does is paste in the place, which is when I when I do this, you'll paste in the place. And then every time I always end in a light and blend mode. So when I, when I do this, I'm going to just, and these are all cop selections from JPEGs. So, so kind of walk us through what's happening here. Yeah, this is a blank exposure, daylight. So this is I just probably, your base exposure of everything? Yeah. Okay. Then, what I did was... Before all these steps, I would do this. I would just make it dark. And then what I would do is I would open up the JPEG. Just use the lasso tool. It's the easiest. It's the quickest. Make a selection. But make, make sure you select everything. Don't worry about if you select too much. Do control C. So this is uh, an image, one of the, the frames that you've taken that are going to be light painted then, correct? Yeah. Okay. So this is a JPEG. What I do is in Bridge, I would use the image processor. But just I like to use, make sure that convert the sRGB is not checked so you don't have a mismatch color problem. So when I when I make a copy, I do Control or Command C. Then this is where the power of the action. I run this action. And this is what I get. And then I get my brush. Make sure to pass the 100. And then I know there are fancy brushes you can use, but I, let's see, I'm tipping my brushes. Let's see. Brush settings. I got to go to brushes. There we go. I just like to keep it simple. It's usually a small, soft, round brush. I know there's a lot more brushes you can use, but I'll just keep things simple and just stick to the soft round brush. Can you walk us through what's happening without your action? Because we don't have your action. So wondering what's happening there. Can you show us? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do Control Command C. Okay. So we've got our apple selected following. Then I go over here and I do this. I'm going to do paste special paste into place. And so what does that do for us? I'll paste it in the place where the where it is in the photograph. So wherever in the frame that it was, it's going to paste it in that exact same spot then. Is that correct? Right. Okay, right. cool. So now, then, you know, white reveals, right? Suppose I paint too much. You may have a selection of another image. That's okay. 
So right reveals, push the X key, block hides. So, so you, you hide your you mistake. You it in place, and then, then what did you do? It's now in Blight and Blend mode. Because the Lighten. reaction's doing that. So you've pasted in place, changed the blend mode to white, and then created a mask that's um, totally black. Is that correct? Yeah, what well, I'm painting in white on a black and a black mask. I'm painting in the light. Okay, so I'm just fo helping everybody follow along with what's happening here, so we can understand okay. what your action does. Yeah, you've just simplified so the action, it so that you don't have to think about it. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you could see this. I paste in the place and they end with the light and blend mode. Okay. I could show it again because it's... Yeah, it's helpful to see what you do without the action. That way uh, we yeah. can follow along. Right, and I'll show the steps and screens again. Okay. So I just one image. This is only part of the light painting. I'm just painting in the light paint, painting in the lighting improvements. And I want to make sure that, you know, white reveals. And if I paint something I don't want to see, that I push the X key. So this, I would open up the JPEG. I'd use just my lasso tool, make the selection, control or command C. And then I'd run this action, paste in the place, and end with the blur. The light and blend mode. So when you, so whenever you want to paste, you want to paste in place, paste special. But I do it in the action. So all you have to do is after I do Control Command C when I paste, I just run this action and does it for me. So you get this Control Command D. But then just use your lasso tool. Don't worry about if you select too much. Do Control Command C. Then actions, paste in the place, blend by lighten, and make sure you're in the right layer. So I'm going to lighten. So paste special. This is part of the action. And then I get my soft brush. And suppose I paint something I don't want to see. Then I just push X. I had to erase it. And then I would just switch it back to, you know, white because white reveals. I'm just painting in improvements on a black layer mess, white. And I would open up that JPEG, get my lasso tool. Is this all from the same image or is each one of these that you're you're going back and illustrating this gray card example uh, just for an example? Or would this be multiple images you're pulling from? Oh, this would be another gray card. This would, I mean, I'm sorry, this would be another image. Okay, this would be so, another so you're just showing us the back and forth um, to illustrate what your process is for copying and pasting. Is that correct? Yeah. Sometimes a computer may freeze. And that's another thing. So you'd open up the JPEG. You look for an image that you want to copy. Control-Command-C. And then you just run this action. Paste in the place. Because every layer... This is a separate JPEG exposure. I would go to my, I would do this, I would open it up. So this would be a brand new JPEG. I'd make a selection. I'd do Control Command C. And it ends in the light and blend mode. I would do Paste Special, Paste in a Place, but it's all in the action. So, Basically, what I'll do, I would just, the only thing I'm doing is this. I open up a JPEG, make a selection. Yep, you run your action. I think we're following along with, with that point. So can you show okay. us after we've uh, pasted the, the layers in um, and yeah. you've done your masking to reveal them or hide the, the rough edges, it looks like? Yeah. Yeah. And then so, what happens? Well, I'm still working on the object. These are separate exposures. Okay. And the power of light painting in Photoshop is just the ability to reveal what you want to see by painting white and a, and a black layer mask. If you paint too much, you paint something you want to see, you push the X, you erase it. 
And then if you, well, the X. And then if you want to be real more, then you switch it back to white. So this, suppose this were, this is a brand new image. I'd open up a brand new image. Actually, I need to do control D. So don't worry about making a perfect selection. Control or Command C. I would paste this image by running this action. I paste in the place, and then I would have the blend mode to lighten. So this is a brand new JPEG I would open up. Brand new JPEG. Brand new JPEG. And then I would just get my brush. I'd paint in what I want to see. And if I paint too much, I push the X and erase what I don't want to see. But if I want to reveal what I want to see, I push the X again. White reveals, black hides. So uh, we've got a couple of uh, questions or confusion that's coming through. And I just want to make sure we're all on the, the same page uh, with what's happening. Um, so what it's sounding like is that uh, uh, the demo that you're showing us is um, how the masking works on there. So uh, yep. the actual light painting, you would have done a series of uh, light painting or exposures using your flashlights and your tools, um, the LED right. lights and the snoots and things like that uh, to light the subjects in interesting ways. After you've right. done all of that, you may have 20 to 40 images, say, uh, right. that are going to be combined into a single file. And this is the section you're showing us now in Lightroom, or excuse me, in Photoshop, is how you're um, combining all the individual um, images, the say 20 to 40 that you just shot into one single document. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. So in other words. Okay, cool. We can jump back into Photoshop, just making sure we're following. Okay. So basically... So basically, I'd find the JPEG. I would circle this, but I'm only going to light paint this. And I would, you know, paste into place. Yeah. So you're just doing mock stuff because you already have all of this done and you're just revealing the layers right now. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I would just paint what I want to see. And if I paint too much, I push the X key and I erase what I don't want to see, something like a mistake. And the same thing over here. So I would open up the JPEG. I would select this out. Just make a selection, doesn't have to be perfect. So this is where the JPEG would do Control or Command C. I'd come over here, I'd do my actions, I'd paste into place, and I'd set the blend mode light. Yep, I think we got all that one. We're good to, to move beyond it and show us your finishing techniques on it. Okay. And do the same thing. Yeah, we're just adding layer upon layer here just to add some depth and dimension to it, right? Right. So this is, the background can be tricky, but it takes a little work. And more background. Now, suppose... If I miss stuff in light painting, so I got rid of this line, I just do a layer. This is kind of crooked, so I decided to make it better, but straight. As far as I missed something, you see this? I don't like this. And just use, you know, and all I did was I just pushed a clone, make sure you have sample all layers. And this is my signature. And then when I talk about actions, where what I do is when I do actions, my name is Mike Francis Pucci so I use MFP, and whatever the action name is. When I run this action, this action happens. I don't know if you could see that. Let me bring up my screen. This action happens. And then I call this action. And then I call this action. And then I run this action. This is a condition. So when you see play action, I call this action. If the document's landscape, call this action. If it's not, call the other action. And these actions 
are defined. What is this action doing though? Is this just adding your signature? This action is calling many actions. Let me just see if I can. This action is routing on the frame and it calls many other actions. Are you just resizing it or what? what I'm not following what's happening in your action. I'm putting in a frame. Oh, gotcha. You're adding in a frame. Okay. Right. Just giving a little bit of presentation skills there. Yeah. So just when you do it for IPC. So then I know that a lot of people here compete. When you do image size, that the width is bigger. And this is all done in the action where if the width is bigger, it's 4,000 pixels. If the height were bigger, it'd be 4,000. This it'd be the width would be something else. So this is all done in the action. So what I'm doing is so this is the action. This is the frame that I create with that action. Gotcha. It's always nice to have some some presentation on there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh Michael, would you say, uh, uh, how many frames are you typically uh, creating when you're doing a light painting? Okay, sometimes I could do 20 or 30. What I like to do is focus on the object as one frame. But when you take up, when you do that, mm -hmm. you, can, you know, if this were, suppose this were one exposure. Just look at this. There's a lot you can get. You maybe you could just do a selection over here. You could do a, you could select the light out. So you could use more than one JPEG exposure to add light in. Like I can maybe add this in and then I would um, add the action. Or I could find um, add this, uh, you know. Yeah. So is there a way for um, your, your, your paste in place one? That sounds like a, a pretty slick action. Um, how can we either create our own or get access to yours or find one or what can we do there? Um, I think I could try emailing this to people. Um, but it's basically you copy it. And when you make a selection and then control command C and then in the action, just do this. Paste in the place, but then when you're here, make sure you're in the layer pass, change the blend mode to lighten. But basically, it's paste in the place after you make a selection, after you do control command C, mm -hmm. after you do this step, put don't put that in the action, but put this in the action, put paste in the place in action, then go back to the layer, make sure you're on the black layer mask, and make sure that it's black. If it's white, just do control I to revert to black. And then you just change the blend mode to lighten. Gotcha. Yeah, I'd so love it if you're able to uh, email me out the uh, the action. We can make sure it gets to everybody. Yeah, I'll try to do that. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I've got some uh, specials and prizes to give away here. Uh, so we'll do that, and then we'll check back in with you in just a second. So how are we on time? Are yeah, we... We're getting pretty close to the end of it. So uh, I'm going to pop and give away some uh, prizes real quick. <laughs> it's always fun doing that one. Um, so uh, for those of you that's uh, um, watching right now, we've got 25% off of gallery wraps at ACI. Um, so that's going through the 17th of next month. Um, so make sure we're jotting down that code. I'm also going to email it out if you've uh, registered for the program. So uh, shout out to uh, ACI for making that happen. And uh, we got some prizes to give away, too. So uh, we've got uh, a $50 lab credit to ACI. So uh, let's use our wheel of prizes and see who that winner is. Uh, so we're bringing that up and see who our $50 prize winner is. And it's Marie. Congratulations, Marie, on that one. <laughs> Up next, we've got a $75 lab credit. So $75 lab credit. And we'll see who's going with that one. And it's Melissa. 
All right. So now we got our grand prize, a $100 lab credit to ACI. We got our $100 lab credit. And we'll see who that winner is. And it's Aaron. And Aaron, when he registered, if you have Maui in your email address, that's the right Aaron. <laughs> so just wanted to let you know on that one. So uh, cool on our prizes. Want to let you know about some upcoming shows that we have as well, because we got some cool ones. So uh, Ray Brinsfree is going to be doing off-camera flash. Uh, we've got Marissa Breda Lavoy doing personal branding with SAS and Rick Avalos doing photography, marketing, and sales. Those ones are all open right now so that uh, you can register for those. Uh, Going to be really, really cool presentations. So make sure we're definitely watching that one uh, too. Do also want to uh, let you know that these are episodes completely driven by you guys. So what do you want to learn? Any photographers or speakers that you have in mind, um, shoot me an email or put into the comments uh, down below on subjects that you'd like to see or people that you'd like to hear about, and I'll track them down and uh, do the legwork on that one. <laughs> All right, Michael, we're coming back to, yeah. Um, so as we kind of wrap up, uh, any parting thoughts or final words for us or uh, little extra bits of goodies? Um, I'd like to do a screen share back to the presentation. Sure. Where, um, you know, I have Facebook groups. I have a still life, fun art creator group. Everyone is welcome to join. I have an architect city state group. I have photography display. Some of these I'm running with other people. Some I'm running by myself. There's also a scoping light. This is a new group. It's growing, but I'm running with someone else. And I have a dramatic photography creator group. They have a marvelous. So, like I said, some of the groups, like this one, this first one, the Still Life Fund Photography Creative Group, I'm running by myself and it's growing every day. I have almost 1,900 members. I have other meetup clubs. So, you're more than welcome to join any of my groups. Yeah, but I've got a link to the, uh, the Still Life one going out to everybody emailed too. Okay, good. Cool. And these are. My Facebook, you can communicate to me by Facebook. Instagram, I'm on Instagram every day. Please follow me on Instagram. I try to try to post like a few times a week. I know I got so much going on. It's so busy. And I got my Google profile, got my LinkedIn, Twitter. So I'm trying to use all this to get my work and other stuff out there. Here's my fine art website. Here's my regular product website, which is called Photography. And that's how we I showed you portfolio. And then this is my YouTube, where it's it's free to join, and I have a section on, you know, still life and light painting. I have a section on black flex table, white flex table, Adobe software, and how Adobe Photoshop. So I have, you know, you get some more behind the scenes stuff going on. Looks like you got quite the library there. Yeah. So these, I did all these. And this is growing, so everyone is welcome to join and just learn as much as you can. My goal is to help many as many people as I can in um, still life photography in any way. Cool. Well, thank you so very much for uh, joining us today and sharing your, your passion and excitement when it comes to uh, doing light painting as on still lifes. So, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, well, that's officially a wrap for tonight, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and congratulations to the winners. And thanks again to American Color Imaging for help making this uh, Let's Develop series possible. All right. Have a great night, everybody.